Welcome to our today's program. As always, I'm your host, Jal Sumba, and today I'm hosting an amazing lady who has a very inspiring story to youth, especially right now that uh, so many girls have missed out to enroll to high school. So she's going to share her story and inspire many souls. So let's get it. Hi, Joyce. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. You well? I'm very well, thank you. Um, welcome and introduce yourself and tell us your story. I want you to inspire youths, especially girls. Uh, so, to the story, Ako. Okay, my name is Joyce, mm -hmm. and um, I was born and raised in Nanyuki by a single mother. May her soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> growing up, life was not easy for me because my mother was a drug addict and uh, she used to drink so that to escape the reality of life mm -hmm. and uh, that affected me growing up because i found myself missing school so that i go look for food myself mm -hmm. so um, she was a loving mother and uh, i remember we used to live in um, meru and uh, Let me come again. Mm. So I used to live in Meru, and um, I remember most of the time in 2009 there was a drought that was going on, mm. and uh, I figured most of my classmates back in class five they used to miss school because the the area was the same. We didn't have food. So if you go to Meru, you know that we have wheat plantation, wheat plantation. So we found that um, we used to miss school, to Nanda Kwa farm, and after harvest, we used to take Izongano Zimebaki mm. so that we go and survive. So I found myself doing that with my classmates, and I also found myself accompanying my mother to go and do manual jobs, that is washing people's clothes, that is... Um, uh, farming, you know, going to Kibarua to farm and get something out of it. Mm. So life was not easy, but I grew up as a happy kid and uh, taking responsibility for my mother. So one of the challenges, especially now that uh, we are talking about education, mm -hmm. one of the challenges that I faced was that I used to admire that parents are coming to school to visit their kids. And that didn't happen to me because my mother, again, she's either drunk or she is busy looking for money, you know, to <laughs> feed us. So, <clears throat> are you the only child? And yes. then many, many people will ask, uh, did you get a chance to know your dad? Well, I am the only child of <laughs> my mother, and um, she didn't, I didn't get a chance to know my dad, like to live with my dad, but. She gave me an opportunity to go and uh, visit my father a couple of times. So uh, I would say my life, my mother was my brother, was my sister, was my father because she, I had a relationship with, with her. Mm -hmm. So I found it interesting that uh, she, I could accompany her, you know, to go and do manual jobs because the family was not capable of, you know, getting to feed all of us. So that is what I did growing up. And um, I remember asking my mother, why don't you come, you know, come to school and visit me? Because I used to do so well mm -hmm. when I was in uh, primary. primary. Mm -hmm. And my mother would tell me, would put it as a joke, like, you know, I am always with you all the time, and I am just giving other people an experience to enjoy who you are, to get to know you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take it as a big deal because she already explained that she's busy, but she is giving, she's with me all the time. Mm -hmm. So she had to give other people an opportunity. But I used to miss it, like, come celebrate with me. I'm coming home with all these gifts from, you know, because I'm number one, I'm mm. best in mads or something, and uh, that didn't happen. And I remember her having a conversation with me that, remember your education, either I come visit you or I don't, remember that your education is your responsibility. Mm. So as early as 10, I knew that 
my mother, my education was my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Either my mother was there <coughs> or she wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I had a good life. Um, in 2010, I, she got sick and uh, she passed away. And that is when I realized that life was different, right? Mm -hmm. Now from living with my mom in Meru mm -hmm. to now adjusting to living with relatives. So I had to move from one relative to another until my uncle took me in. And uh, he had a small family, you know, and now she was also struggling. He didn't have a, a, a good job. Mm -hmm. So we, I had to adjust, you know. So right now I was in 2010, I was in class six. Mm -hmm. So um, life was not easy because losing a person and understanding that the world is still moving on and I'm still stuck with what my mother is no more. I had to go to a new school, you know. I got bullied in school. I didn't understand what they're talking about. Um, it was not easy. I was the new kid and I was a kid that was going through a lot. So socializing was not very easy. Mm. So I had traumas because I just lost a mother, right? And I could not make friends. So the bullying was that. Fast forward, I started living with my aunt and uh, took responsibility, you know. Now I am in this family, you know, they have all the, my aunt and my uncle, they have kids. So these kids started being my siblings, right? And we, uh, you know, life was and good. all along you were used to living alone. Yes, all along I was used to living alone. So I am now living with other people, both my uncle and my aunt and their kids. So it was not also easy. Uh, I just I would like to understand it. Now that you had lost your mom and you were also you had once met or once or twice met your dad, uh, people could probably uh, pop in with the question, why, why would you opt to go and stay with your father? Uh, because mm -hmm. my death, my mother's death wish was that he, she left me with under care of my uncle mm -hmm. and that is what she said when she was almost dying like she said i am leaving you i from now henceforth i want take you to understand mm -hmm. yes uh, she told her to take care of my daughter yes mm -hmm. I, from now henceforth mm -hmm. uh, your aunt and your uncle mm -hmm. um, you should consider them oh your, she knew your, how she was parents. almost passing i think she mm -hmm. knew she was almost passing because mm -hmm. i remember i was telling her panna you need to take your medication and we need to go back home to where we belong mm -hmm. so i felt i didn't understand what she was talking about at that point so it wasn't easy now I had to respect them. I had to adjust to this lifestyle, you know. And uh, moving forward, class six, class seven, class eight, life was still the same. My aunt, my uncle, they were still struggling. They didn't get an opportunity to go to college and get good jobs. Mm -hmm. So we used to live, I, my aunt used to have a salon. So I used to work in the salon so that, you know, I can also contribute to the family. And um, in 2013, I remember we didn't have money for me to go to high school. Mm -hmm. So life was not easy because everybody had gone to school and I was literally the only person in my village who was stuck at not home, afford school fees. who could not afford that school fees. So And you had passed? I had. And I used to think, okay, my mother said, Either she's there or not. I need to remember that my education is my responsibility. responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I used to think, okay, what can I do for me to save money to be able to take myself to school? So I engaged myself in learning how to plate hair, how to do blow dry, how to wash people's head. And um, that is what I used to do. And I remember... Um, it couldn't, it wasn't enough. Whatever we used to get in the salon, okay. it wasn't enough to cater for the food at home and also to cater for my high school education. So I stayed at home and I was like, 
even if it will take me five years, mm -hmm. I will still, still go, back. go back to school mm -hmm. when, at some point. So a guardian angel came. I remember we were, do, we were in the salon and this wonderful woman came mm -hmm. in the salon and she was like, what are you doing? What, what is she doing here? Everybody is at school. And my aunt was telling her she, we don't have money to take her to school, so she's working here uh, to be able to go to school and raise money so that we can facilitate to go to school. And she told her there's a school that is called Daraja Academy that takes girls like this. That is what she said. And I was like, okay, girls like... You know, what do you mean like this? There, <laughs> like this. But I understood the way she articulated it. Mm. It is to say, okay, girls that don't have parents, mm. girls that come from humble background, mm. and indeed it's true, I couldn't afford. So I go to school. I go to my aunt goes the following day, gets a letter. I apply for Daraja, and I remember one day, you know, I had already forgotten about the Daraja application, and they call me, hey, for an interview. So I am excited. I am like, this is my only chance for going how long? to school. Probably three, like a month, three weeks or like a month, you know. And uh, I was lucky enough to be part of Daraja in 2013. And I joined, that's how I joined high school. Four years down the line, I finished school. Mm -hmm. But at the back of my head, remember, I am at a boarding school, but things are still the same back at home. Mm. My aunt still is doing struggling. struggling. Mm -hmm. My uncle is still struggling. They don't have a job, right? So in Form 3, I started thinking, okay, what can I do, you know? And I really worked so hard. Uh, and when I finished Form 4, I went back home. And now you see, when you go back home, it is an added plate. Mm. You know, after two days, I went back to town looking for a job, Jael. I went back to town looking for, you know, a job. And I remember back in high school, I was in media club. So I used to write articles mm -hmm. because I was so much interested in media. So mm. I used to write articles. I used to, I knew the only chance for me is to to connect with my network mm -hmm. that I had made in Daraja. Mm -hmm. So I look for this guy, uh, he's called Robert, uh, he was doing County Times 10, uh, the letter, the, the magazine, mm -hmm. of, like Kipia County Times 10. So I talk to him, I, I go to the office, I introduce myself, tell him, I used to write articles for you, can you please connect me to a job because I want to save for college. Mm -hmm. And he tells me, we don't have, you know, we do we not have, much. we don't even have an opportunity <laughs> to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, but you know people that know people, that right? Can, yeah, that uh, can you know people. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, okay, I will take you to somebody that has a, a hot, that money, uh, that runs a hot, uh, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Let's go and see if they can connect you to some, to mm -hmm. somebody else. So we go to a hotel in Nanyuki. Uh, we go to Beisa and I meet this wonderful lady managing, you know, their the hotel. Mm -hmm. And I am just amazed, wow, you know. And uh, Robert is trying to talk to this person, you know, their friends. She's called Lucy. Mm -hmm. So Lo Robert is trying to tell Lucy, this is Joyce, you know, from Daraja. How can you help her? And I was like, Robert. Let me sell myself. Mm. Please let me talk to Lucy. Let she me, can let understand me, yes, me well. Let me talk to Lucy <laughs> because I'll, I am the one looking for a job. So I sell myself. I tell Lucy I can do anything. I am just looking for an opportunity to support, to help me save so that I can take myself to college. She look at me. She's, she likes me in a way. She's like, okay. We can try to find a job, but there's no, you know, there's no open position. Mm -hmm. So she told me, come back tomorrow. I go there at 7. We had agreed we meet at 8, but Lucy didn't show up. So I'm seated at the reception, and I'm like, okay, I can, I was told to come, so I will I, start I will, the job. I, yeah. So I go to the reception, I meet, uh, you know, a wonderful lady. I tell her, my meeting with Lucy was 7 for me to start a job, but... 
seems like it's already nine. What mm. can I be doing as I wait for her? Mm. So she tells me, go to the kitchen. There's a manager in the kitchen. They will help you out. Mm. So I go, I start, you know, getting to know the area. They stand to send me. At this point, I am so tiny. And they used to call me Katoto because mm. they didn't even know my name. Oh, Katoto, tell Katoto to come. So I used to do errands until now Luce came. So Luce came and we had a conversation. So she told me, now uh, I want you to learn housekeeping. I used to be the Katoto, somebody that I, a young person mm -hmm. from high school working with you know big people. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot. So moving forward, I enjoyed, I started saving for my, you know, saving for college, whatever small I got, and interacting, getting to know the, you know, the world, the reality of life, mm -hmm. and uh, I had, I, I had from Daraja, so Daraja, there's a, a program that runs after high school, you need to go back for six months. So I go to Lucy, I tell Lucy. Listen, I need to talk to you. Uh, I want my job because it is, you're paying me, right? Mm. And it is supporting me in so lot. many ways, mm. right? However, there's this uh, an opportunity that I'm supposed to go back to high school for a transition program to help me go to college. Mm -hmm. So luckily, mm -hmm. this is where now Glow Foundation came in. Mm. So there's this, an American, you know, the, um, an amazing lady, she's called Jenny Lowry. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to visit Daraja, so she is a friend of Daraja. So when she used to come to Daraja, she realized that girls after Form 4, they don't proceed because yeah. home, the challenges are the same, right? And uh, there's no hope for them going to school. So she thought of opening, you know, bringing a few friends together so that they can be able to help girls, Daraja girls go to college. So I was lucky, I got an application and uh, I went to high, to, to university. So I went to Multimedia University to mm -hmm. do journalism, to do film and TV production mm -hmm. and uh, my life transformed. Mm -hmm. So now I am a big girl in Nairobi, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. I have, I still have to survive. Mm -hmm. So this program, this Glow Foundation, I have a scholarship, right? So my uncle brings me, you know, to Nairobi mm -hmm. with my sister. They, they, they take me, you know, and they tell me to take care of myself. And I remember uh, that time the Glow Foundation had already paid my fees, but I didn't have any money. But remember the money that I had saved with, you know, working with, that hotel, that hotel mm -hmm. had came in handy because mm -hmm. I was able to facilitate by a few things that facilitated myself. So I go to school, my fee is paid, and I thank God because my fee is paid. Now moving forward, I had to adjust. I saw my uncle take his last coin, right, to buy me a mattress, and I felt, felt it. it. Mm -hmm. I I f I couldn't hold it, Joanne, because. We were in a small hotel because we came from Nanyuki to Nairobi, mm -hmm. 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. So we're in Nanyuki, we're, we're in Nairobi now, and we are looking for some, somewhere to, find, to take breakfast, right? And we go to this tiny hotel. I see my uncle order, you know, tea and, and, and a slice of cake. And we shared that, and I felt like crying. I, I cried, actually, because I saw... I started asking myself, okay, how will you get home, mm. right? You have given your time, you are all mm. for me to come to school. Mm -hmm. So that motivated me to remember like, okay, well, you need to work hard. To work hard mm. because, you know, my guardian has given everything, you know, mm -hmm. that he has. So um, they left and I was now left alone mm. in, in, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. The first day adjusting jail was not easy. I know, it is crazy. <laughs> it was not easy. Mm -hmm. I remember um, I have my bed, mm -hmm. my room is mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. I have a bed mm -hmm. and I started now adjusting like I'm an adult now. Mm. Like I need to look for a job. 
you know, I need to learn my studies, I, I need to learn every single thing mm. that is need is there for me to adjust in school. So I am grateful because uh, immediately I was able to settle in school. I, I remember those times we used to have strikes a lot in university. Mm -hmm. So I did a semester and there was a strike, a mega strike. So instead of me going back home, I decided to stay in Nairobi mm -hmm. and look for jobs. So this point I'd go to Isili, I would go to Kamokonji, and I would tell them, I come from Nanyuki, I have a very big shop in Nanyuki, <laughs> so how can they make sure that as their client, I am able to get to be updated when they get goods. Mm. So they used to tell me, oh, we have Facebook, we have, you know, WhatsApp group that we add our client. Anytime we have something new, yeah. we post. Yeah. So I started learning. So I took a whole day. Uh, going through uh, Kamokonji and Isili just to be added to those groups. So at the end of the day, I remember I used to be in so many groups and that's how I survived. So whatever I was able to get from the side hustle, I was able to invest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And time went by. Uh, now in 2020, I'm almost graduating, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember this 2020, in 2019, 2018, I had already this. You know, I, I used to do videography and I used to work with um, the county government of Pokot. So I mm. used to do uh, documentaries a lot. So I was preparing for my next season mm. after college, right? And I remember uh, now in 2020, whatever money I was able to get from my side hustles, mm. I was able to open a cash shop, right? Now remember, Glow Foundation is facilitating my upkeep is facilitating my my school fees so whatever money i have i need to save it for my next season which is after college right uh, so that is what happened i opened a small shop in rongai mm -hmm. and i used to run it tell you know student now you can come and buy from here and life was you know good until COVID happened, mm. right? Mm. So COVID happened, I was still in Nairobi, I hadn't gotten a chance to go home, mm -hmm. so I was still in Nairobi. Five months down the line, I'm you know, taking money from my pocket for this small business, I closed it. I was like, okay, it is time for me to g move forward because we are not making profit, yes. right? And it is also important for our viewers to understand, to know when it's time for, you know, the, the grace of God, if it's over, it's time for you to move forward. Mm. So understanding your seasons mm. is one of the important it's things yeah. in life mm -hmm. and preparing you for another, another season. Yeah, sure. So I understood, okay, I cannot make loss. It is time for me to move forward. So the money, the, the, the money, the emergency fund that I had for after college, now remember we're in COVID, I started using it. And now I am worried because I thought, you know, I was set after college, you know. This is where I'll buy them from. I, I'll have a small business. Mm. I'll have, you know, I have saved small money mm. for myself through mm. side hustle. Mm -hmm. And I knew that uh, I was set at least before I get a stable job. Mm. So I get a, an opportunity with Glow Foundation to apply for a job. And I remember Glow Foundation, the founder, she wanted to the girls that go through the program to come and facilitate to be the leaders of the program mm. so the pioneer class that applied the very first remember the very mm. first time mm. the pioneer that applied uh, we had an opportunity all of us to apply for uh, an opposition uh, a position in glow so i apply and i forget about it so i receive a call from a colleague of mine and she tells me hi your application for Glow Foundation is successful, and uh, if you're interested, we'd love to hire you. Mm. Joanne, I felt like this is the best day of my life because I remember I, I, I jumped up and down because I've always had passion for education, mm. you know, because growing up, my mother, you know, instilled you a lot of challenges. Yes, mm. you know. And I really wanted to, I felt a relief that they are offering me a there job. there is a turn of something. Yes. Mm. And I felt there was, there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. If you 
are persistent with your craft and if you stay focused somehow it will align yeah, right sure. so i get a job and to work with this amazing ngo to support girls transition to college mm. and it was a calling so i take the opportunity i was like yes 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 and it is work from home so you know i will not be going from rongai all the way to you know to mm. westlands and life was changed for me mm -hmm. so uh just because of time and uh, having talked of uh, glow because mm. right now you know we are in that season that lots of girls are missing out from school yeah. and probably they would like to approach your ngo and yeah. get to know more uh, just tell us a little bit of it and then what can you tell girls okay mm -hmm. so glow foundation um, I'm the operations manager mm -hmm. at Glow Foundation and uh, what we do is we take vulnerable girls, girls that, you know, have financial constraints, uh, girls, you know, that could have been married if they didn't get an opportunity to, you know, to go to school. So we help those particular girls with limited, limited opportunities to go to college and university. So we have so far sponsored um, 145 and counting. So you can imagine those are 145 family changed mm. because if you educate a woman, you educate the their community. family and the whole community. Mm. So this is an organization that not only gives you money, right? Your mm. school fees and your upkeep. This is an organization that will make sure that, you know, they give you mentorship. To, to know what you're you supposed to do, somebody to guide you through. Mm -hmm. They'll give you online, you know, online mentorship, physical mentorship. And um, this is an organization that um, helps your dreams come to reality. We, we partner with so many people to make mm -hmm. sure that the life of this individual that is in the program Transitions, uh, transitions to be an amazing woman, mm -hmm. right? And even after college, we work with these people, okay? Now you're no longer a student, you no longer receive upkeep from GLOW or HELP. How can we help you package yourself in, in, in a way that you are able to attract jobs, opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, out here? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I love about my work mm -hmm. is the fact that I'm able to see vulnerable girls you know, girls that really remind me of myself mm -hmm. and the to transitioning, woman. yes, to a woman that is working, is a, a manager somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, a woman that you can hold a conversation with, a meaningful conversation with. Mm -hmm. And I would just like to tell girls that you're not limited, right? Even Eliud Kipchoge said, no human is limited. Mm -hmm. So those challenges that you're facing should be your motivation, your, your yeah, power, to push to, you know, to push forward, to say, okay, I am here today, but what is my drive, right? Mm. And that drive should be able to help you push forward because you are amazing the way you are, mm -hmm. right? And keep on, hold tight, mm -hmm. keep swearing, keep looking for those opportunities, knock those doors, and don't sell yourself short. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. I so much appreciate it. And I believe that uh, most families will come for you because they know there's something for them. Thanks so much. Uh, to my viewers, I have nothing to add on. Uh, for those ones who probably will need to find out how they can get assisted, just I said it is glow. Till next time, I'm Jelm Sumba.